Hey YouTube friends, this is Shane Long, wedding and portrait photographer based in Minnesota and Florida. And for the last few years, I've been photographing with the Canon EF 85mm f1.4 IS. I absolutely love that lens. But when I bought the Canon EOS R5, which I'm recording with right now, I wanted the best of the bokeh. So I purchased the RF 85mm f1.2. In this video, I'm gonna take side-by-side -side comparisons so you can decide, is the bokeh worth it for you? I'll also look at the sharpness, the build quality, basically everything about this lens. Here we go. As long as I have been photographing weddings, I've had an 85 millimeter lens in my bag. The beautifully smooth background blur creates a romantic, dreamy, elegant feel. For many, their wedding day is the most memorable day of their lives. The shallow depth of field an 85mm lens can produce keeps all of the attention on the bride and groom. Later in the video, I will walk you through how I use my 85mm lens on a wedding day, but I would like to start by evaluating the bokeh of the RF 85mm 1.2. The first question I have is, is there a difference between the bokeh of the 85mm f1.2 to the bokeh of the 85mm f1.4? Let's check it out. I'm recording myself with the RF 85mm f1.2 at 1.2, so you can see what the bokeh looks like on that. The R5 is the camera I'm using right now in full face and eye detection, and you can see just how quick it works. Let's really try it out. All right, now I'm recording myself with the EF 85mm f1.4 at 1.4. So you can see how that looks. Here I am with the face detection on the R5. So you can see the difference in the bokeh between the two lenses. I overlaid the clips side by side here. You will notice that the RF 85mm 1.2 does have significantly larger bokeh. I put the R5 on a tripod, set the white balance to cloudy, and used the only subject I had available at the time, me. So let's start by taking a look here at a full body portrait. Both images look fantastic, they have plenty of background blur. I was curious though which had the bigger bokeh. So when I zoomed in here to compare the highlights and the circles, I was shocked at how much bigger and more smooth the RF 85mm version was. The EF version seems to have this kind of ring or this outline, the outline kind of on the outside here, whereas the RF version is pretty just smooth, creamy. It really just obliterates everything in the background. I did my best to stand in the exact same spot, but I did find it interesting when I started looking at the images that the RF version does seem slightly more zoomed in than the EF version. This would create bigger bokeh as well, as when the lens is more zoomed in, things get a little more compressed and the background blur just a, bit, a little bit larger. I could also tell this because when I zoomed in, it seems like my head is just a touch larger on the RF version than it is on the EF version. Here are two more side-by-sides. Can you tell which one is the RF 1.2 and which one is the EF 1.4? If you can't, it's probably not worth the extra money for you. But if you look closely, you'll notice pretty quick that this one has much larger bokeh highlights. The out of focus circles are larger, the background is more smooth, and when we start coming in here and looking at the detail, you'll notice that this lens is perfectly contrasty and sharp, whereas this one loses just a touch of the contrast, you'll see some purple highlights starting to come in, and you'll notice that even on my face here, this one is significantly sharper with more detail and better color, whereas the EF version is a little bit soft even though it is pretty crazy sharp. I'm just blown away how optically perfect the RF version is. Again, these are straight out of camera, raw images. I haven't done anything to them. These I shot at F2, and I was curious if I shot the RF version at F2 and the EF version at F2, would the bokeh be any different in those? And I was pretty surprised actually to find out that the highlights look almost identical. There is no difference in the size of the highlights. The RF version is just a touch sharper, but not significantly enough to justify the extra price. So if you are someone that's gonna shoot at F2, the RF 1.2 lens isn't worth the extra money for you in my opinion. 
On that note, let's take a look at two images. This one is shot with the RF 1.2 at 1.2, and this image is shot with the RF 1.2 at F2. You can quickly tell the difference between an image shot at F1.2 and shot at F2. The bokeh isn't even close. So if you are considering the new, um, I think Canon has a new RF uh, 85mm F2 version IS with macro, and you're looking for the best of the bokeh, the image will probably end up looking kind of like this. For me, I'm really looking for that highest possible image quality. So the Canon R5 with the 85mm 1.2 really align with that vision. Going back now, let's look at the vignetting on this lens. I don't find it to be a big deal. It's easily corrected with the lens correction. And with the Canon R5, the shadow recovery is phenomenal. So there's no degradation or loss of image quality on the edge of the image. I have it built into my own personal preset so that when I import my photos, it's automatically gonna remove the vignette. Here we go. Here's the back of the camera. Give me that happy smile now. Three, two. I had missed that magical look of the EF 85 millimeter 1.2 when I owned that lens and it's all back here with the RF version with the added bonus of extreme crazy sharpness. This lens is insanely sharp, like nothing I've ever used. I can see the individual threads in the leather of her shoes, her zippers on her boots. The depth of field is so thin, and yet because of the perfect eye focus of the R5, it hits every single time, and nailing the shot at 1.2 is an absolute dream. Like, I could not have more fun with this lens. Anytime I want the subject to just pop out of the photo, this is my go-to lens. All right, happy smile again. All right, here we are again. I'm at 1.2. The subject is walking towards me. I'm using the eye tracking and it is tack sharp, teeth, lips, perfectly in focus. I can see the individual fabrics in this shirt, which you probably can't see on your monitor, but on mine, it is incredible. And here's the next frame that I clicked. Also tack sharp, individual eyelashes are visible, teeth are razor sharp. There you go. Walking away photo, the head tracking, tack sharp, the individual hairs of her head are in focus, shirt is all in focus, you can keep going down. Even the individual laces again on her boots are razor sharp and you can see right here how thin that depth of field is. But when it is in focus, it is 100% tack sharp at f1.2. And yet the background is perfectly creamy. So it, this lens just creates this amazing juxtaposition of perfectly sharp with perfectly smooth. Now run this way, ready, set, go. Perfect. There is no way with the EF 85mm 1.2 I would have ever had a subject running towards me and shot it at f1.2. But here we are, 1.2, she's sprinting towards me, she is perfectly in focus. Again, I can't even believe it. Like this is something I was never able to do before. It's a whole new ball game here with this lens and this camera. All right, on this one we're gonna see how fast the 85 can go from completely out of focus to finding her face. Here we go, three, two, and one. Three, two, and one. There it hit her. And give me that smile now. Jeez, all right. That is how quick the autofocus is, going from completely out of focus, instantly, perfectly in focus. I, I really still am in awe that it can even find a face and a head that quick and perfectly nail the focus. Sharp all the way to the edge of the frame. I mean, this is a 1.2 lens, so the glass is very large and it can move that glass very quickly. This is a massive upgrade from the EF 85 millimeter 1.2. If you own the EF 85 millimeter F1.4 IS, 
in actual use, it seems like the, uh, the AF speed is very similar. When the sun shines directly into a lens, the flare and the artifacts can either be used artistically or they can ruin a photo. So you can see how it handles the sun flare. Here's a clip shot at f1.2 and here's a clip shot at f4. I personally try to avoid flare as too often the artifacts end up on the subjects I'm trying to photograph. In case you're wondering how the image stabilization is with this lens on the R5, I'm gonna try a 1 30th of a second exposure, a, I don't know, a 10th of a second exposure, a fifth of a second exposure. We'll try a half second exposure and a full second exposure. Let's just see what this thing can do. Okay, here's a look at those photos. See, so here's 1 30th, it's sharp, 1 20th, sharp, 1 10th, sharp, 1 5th. Just starting to get a little bit of motion blur here but for one photo, that's pretty good. If I had taken a couple, I probably could have gotten it sharp. One half, that is not bad. It's actually sharper than I did on my one fifth photo. And then one second here is where I tried two takes and I wasn't able to get a sharp photo with two takes, but I was just standing handheld. So that's very impressive. Now I can easily go down to one tenth of a second and get very crisp, sharp photos. As long as my subject stays stationary, that is a big game changing tool for me. When I first started using the RF 85mm 1.2, it felt too large to me. I just wasn't used to a lens with that much girth. But now, after using it for two months, I'm totally used to it. And where the lens meets the camera, it's actually super slender. So now I hold the lens and camera like this, and it's perfectly balanced. Switching the autofocus on and off has a nice click to it, but it's almost too easy now that I've used it a little while. So I find that occasionally I'll accidentally flip it to manual focus when I didn't want to. The one other con with the new RF lenses is the dust caps. They have to be aligned perfectly with the two little lines to be put on the lens. They do have a very tight fit to them, but when I'm changing lenses quickly, looking down to find those two little lines is just too cumbersome. The focus ring and the satisfying click of the control ring are both very amazing. All right, now for some size comparisons. Here they both are as they would fit on the Canon R5 or R6 or whichever mirrorless camera that you're using. This has the adapter that I was using on the 85mm 1.4 with its hood. So you can see with the hood on, the RF 85mm 1.2 is larger. If we remove the hoods, but we're still adapting the EF 85 millimeter 1.2 onto the R system, that, that lens is longer at that point, though it is more slender. The weight though does feel basically the same. Here's how the 85 would be if you were putting it like on a 5D compared to the 85 if you were putting this on the R5. If you're debating between the RF 50mm 1.2 and the RF 85mm 1.2, I would probably start with the 50mm. It's zoomed out just a little bit more, so it's a little bit more versatile. So why an 85mm? You'll notice that 85mm lens is a little bit more compressed. That background is brought towards the subject a little bit more, whereas the background's pushed back a little bit more with the 50mm lens. I have a whole video on portraiture and which lens to use for portraiture if you want to check that out on my channel. Now let's look at some portraits I've made with the RF 85mm 1.2 so you can see does it fit into your workflow? Is it going to meet your needs? An 85mm lens is the classic portrait lens and this lens does not disappoint. It perfectly blurs the background while giving you tack razor sharp eyes so that your subject just pops out of the photo. On this image, I stopped down to f2.2. Her eyes are in focus, razor sharp, and yet the background continues that beautiful blur. I also use my 85 millimeter lenses for full body portraits, especially on senior portrait sessions. It allows me to separate the subject from the background and really continue to put the focus where I want it on that senior since it's all about them. This photo is a really fun one for me. It has that complete studio feel to it. We're outside, he's actually sitting on the sidewalk, but because the lens can blur out the background so well, and with just a little light from the reflector on a cloudy day, his face is perfectly well filled, and it feels like we just have a nice white backdrop in a studio. 
For the next photo, I took him down by the river here, captured some of the fall colors. The background pulls closer to him and just blurs away and he just pops out of the photo. For headshots though, it doesn't get any better than this lens. I have the RF 85 millimeter F1.2 with the R5. I'm at an engagement session out in this amazingness. Here's a couple images from that engagement session. I didn't use my 85 millimeter a lot on the engagement session since we were out in nature and it's a little bit too tight for nature kind of context photos, but it still allows me to get a little farther away from my subjects. I do notice that the farther I'm away, sometimes the more natural they are interacting and the more comfortable they feel. I mean, it is a little awkward. You're showing up, some guy you barely even know is taking your pictures and he's coming right into your space. So having an 85 millimeter lens allows you to stay back, especially at the beginning of the session, so that they can get a little bit more comfortable with you and be themselves. Okay, now I'd love to walk you through how I use an 85 millimeter lens on a wedding day. I often start with the 85 millimeter lens during the getting ready photos because the rooms aren't always the prettiest and there are often bags laying on the floor, hairspray bottles, people's clothes. So having a tighter lens and having an aperture of 1.2 allows me to just kind of remove those distracting elements and put the focus right on the subject and the important moments that are happening. I frequently use it during the ceremonies as it's a good focal length to be able to get unique angles, different perspectives, and I often use it for the first kiss if I can get close enough to the subject. Otherwise, I'm back a little farther, probably with my 135 lens. Though I use my 50 millimeter lens more during the wedding day, I do put on the 85 millimeter lens during the portraits just to mix up the perspective and get a little bit more compression, a little more variety into the images. The lens is great too for detail photos at receptions. The compression kind of brings all the details together and then it allows kind of the focal point just to pop right out of the photo. All these images I'm showing you right here were shot at f1.2. The aperture in the dark rooms is super helpful. With the image stabilization built into the R5, it removes the camera shake as I'm shooting some of these very dimly lit situations and allows me to capture the moments as they're happening. I have owned all of the Canon 85 millimeter lenses, the EF 1.8, the EF 1.2 version two, the EF 1.4 IS, and I've even owned the Sigma 85 millimeter art lens. Each of them had something about them that I really liked, but they each had something about them that ended up causing me to end up selling them. Of those lenses, I really liked the EF 85 millimeter 1.4 IS. So what caused me to spend the extra money and buy the RF 85 millimeter 1.2? What I was looking for was that unique 3D pop to my images that would separate my work from the crowd. The RF 85 millimeter 1.2 delivers razor sharp images and yet the background is buttery soft. It's a perfect 3D pop every single time. Combine that with its quick and accurate autofocus and you have a perfect lens. If you're just starting out and you can't justify that price tag, look at the RF 85 millimeter to macro. It will give you good background blur with the bonus of up close capability. However, if you're a full-time pro and you want a lens in your bag that will make your photos stand out, I could not recommend this lens more highly. I'll have links to all these products below if you wanna pick them up, that really helps us out. And if you would, hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more fun videos coming for you. We'll see you next time.